I'm very happy to be here with you and to share this time with you. My intent is that by sharing part of my journey, you may hear something that will help you along your journey. Shall we begin? Our Father, we've come together today on our journey to share and to learn and to draw closer to you. Our hearts and our minds are open to receive your spirit. Please enter in to where you already reside. There is a scene in Gone with the Wind where Scarlet is crying to Rhett that she's so afraid that she's going to die and go to hell. And Rhett asked her, said, well, how can you be so sure that there is a hell? And she goes, oh, oh, yes, there is a hell. I was raised on it. And I thought, well, weren't we all? Haven't we all sat and listened to sermons about hellfire and brimstone and our eternal damnation because we are all so sinful? And we've all heard phrases like, well, she's living in sin. We are such a sinful nation. And there is a special place in hell for that guy. As I grew up listening to such things and learning in Sunday school that God was keeping tabs of everything that we did wrong, I began to view my faith with what I think of as a vertical ruler. Where if you did all the things right, go to church, pay your tithes, don't tell lies, don't steal your brother's candy bar, you actually got to move up on the scale. But if you mess up and sin, you fall down on the scale. Then you ask for forgiveness, you start to move back up. And uh, I began to question, how, how, do you, how do you know when you've gotten high enough on the scale that you qualify for heaven? And we're told we've all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God, so I couldn't figure out where was the passing grade. And then I began to hope, well, maybe God grades on the curve. Maybe we don't have to get all the way to the top, and maybe there is a point where we're okay. We, we've got it. But I spent a lot of time trying to figure that out, trying to figure what is right action? What, how am I supposed to live this life? But I never, I never got that answer using that vertical scale. And as I got older and a little more mature in my journey, I began to ask, well, why were we even here? What are we even doing here? Were, were we just born to um, take a chance on being thrown into hell for the rest of eternity or work really, really hard to try to get into heaven? Is that why we were here? And if that was the case, I felt like the cards were stacked against us. Then I remember... I remember a day in a philosophy class, philosophy class, that's kind of hard to say, when we were all asked that two-word question that has always befuddled mankind, why I? And of course that drew a lot of discussion and a lot of opinions. But what it did for me is it set me on a lifelong journey of finding out why I? I read everything I could possibly find on all the world's great religions. I studied all the great philosophers. I attended lots of sermons and lots of lectures. 
But what I kept coming back to were the teachings of Jesus. But I also found that I was listening with a new ear. And I was hearing his words say something different to me than what I had been traditionally taught. And I felt the pieces of the puzzle starting to form. Jesus spent most of his time not talking about sin, but talking about love. And I think we get so caught up on the idea of sin and the possibility of going to hell that we miss that. And I've read the passage where after his three or more years of ministry and his disciples and followers being with him all this time, hearing him teach and preach and guide and direct every day for that long, when he told them, he said, now I'm going to be leaving you soon. They threw up their hands and said, Master, how can you do that? How are we going to know what to do? I think if I'd been Jesus, I'd probably said, well, where have you been for the last three years? Have you not been paying attention? But he didn't. He answered it with a very short but profound statement. He said, love, just love one another like I have loved you. And to think that that one statement covered his entire ministry. He didn't offer them a comprehensive overview of everything he had done. He just said love. So it was at that point, I knew I had to throw away my vertical ruler and start rethinking everything. And I remember as a child believing that I began when I was born on this earth. And I think that's what made the question, why I, so difficult. Then I read the passage in the Bible that perhaps I had heard many, many times before. But I, when I read it again, it said something different to me. It says, before, before I formed you in your mother's wound, I knew you. We were with God. We were in heaven before ever agreeing with him to come here. Now, this was something I had not considered before. But it also brought up the question again. If we were in heaven with God, where everything was well, heavenly, why on earth would we decide to come to earth? And if we are the children of God, why would he let us come here? Because there's a lot of stuff here that's not in heaven. Trials, tribulations, disease, war, all of those things. We were coming here and we were going to experience that. So that took me back to the question, why I? When I began studying the Course in Miracles, it was like the next step on my journey of answering that question. And the very opening of the Course reads, nothing real can ever be threatened, nothing unreal exists. Herein lies the peace of God. So I started 
making my charts of what I thought was real and what I thought was unreal. And I kept narrowing it down till the only thing that I found to put under the column titled real was love. That was the only thing that was true and real. It was the only thing that's eternal. And I also learned that instead of committing sins that I'd grown up on like Scarlet, that we make errors and mistakes. And those errors and mistakes can be corrected. When we choose to correct our errors and mistakes, we're choosing to focus on love instead of sin. And I recall several passages in the Bible where Jesus is teaching. And he's asked over and over, should I do this, should I do that? One question that was posed to him is, how many times do I forgive? Is it seven times? And Jesus said, no, 70 times seven. And he also said, don't worry about getting the moat out of your brother's eye till you get the log out of your own. And I grew up believing that this was about forgiveness, and certainly it is. But now I believe it's also about something a lot deeper and more significant. It's about where we're putting our focus. Because where we put our focus, our energy follows. If we put our focus on what we perceive to be someone else's errors and mistakes, what we perceive to be the horribleness of the world and everyone that's in it, when we put our focus on our own faults and shortcomings, then we're putting focus on negativity. And we're sending our energy there. And isn't that just putting fuel onto the fire? I think one thing that Jesus was telling us, don't put your focus there. Put your focus on love. Because one high loving thought can erase many, many lower negative ones. In order to do that, we can't just go through the motions. We have to hold in our heart the desire, the desire to show, feel, and know only love. That is called our intent. If we only go through the motions, then we're sowing our seeds on barren ground. But every time we offer love in any form that it takes, when we choose to forgive instead of condemn, when we choose compassion over criticism, whenever we choose kindness over anger, we raise the level of love in the world. We are contributing to the one and only real thing in this universe. And we are sowing our seeds on fertile ground where it will grow and multiply. So again, when I ask the question, well, why am I here? I borrow a phrase from the Blues Brothers. We're on a mission from God. And he sent us here with one request. Always, always choose to love. Because when we do, when we choose love, we grow in spirit. And when we grow in spirit, we raise the vibration up not only 
our energy, we raise the vibration of love in the entire universe. And when we go full circle back to our Father from where we came, I don't believe for one minute that we're going to be met with a laundry list of all of our sins. What I do believe we will find is the answer to why I, because I believe we will find a heaven that was expanded every time we chose to love. In the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen.